You have pain in many parts of your body, constant pain for years. It seems that nobody knows what the cause of this chronic pain is. You get different diagnoses every time that you see a different doctor. In addition to pain, you wake up in the morning and you feel like a truck run over your body the whole night. Your mood is very depressed and you have anxiety attacks. It's hard for you to concentrate and your memory is poor. Your doctor suggested that these symptoms could be caused by central sensitization. Central what? You asked. If this is your case, then this video is for you. Today, I will explain what are the symptoms of central sensitization? How does a person develop central sensitization? Is there any test that can be ordered to confirm the diagnosis? And most importantly, how to get rid of central sensitization? So, let's talk about central sensitization today. The main symptom of central sensitization is pain in many areas of the body. It is pain that is hard to define, hard to localize, difficult to explain. It's a constant pain. It seems that your pain never goes away. There is always a background pain, like if you're always conscious of pain, even when you're trying to distract yourself, it's always there. There might also be some numbness, tingling and tremors. The pain is spreading to many parts of your body. It may have started with low back pain, but now it's affecting the upper back, the shoulders, the thighs, the knees and so on. You don't know why the pain is spreading to your body. Even your head hurts, your eyes, and even sometimes the chest, sometimes even hurts to breathe. This already seems very severe, doesn't it? Well, but this is not all. You also have other vague symptoms like dizziness, difficulty to concentrate, poor memory, and fatigue. Well, you feel tired all the time, but then you go to bed and you can't sleep. And when you wake up in the morning, you feel like a truck run over your body all night. In some cases, the person has restless legs when they are trying to sleep at night. Their mood is also affected. They have symptoms of depression and anxiety attacks. And that's not all. There are people with central sensitization who also develop some skin problems like dryness, itchiness and rashes. There is more. Certain perfumes and smells make them dizzy and nauseated. And more. They also have to urinate frequently and have pelvic pains and pain for urinating or doing sexual activity. You may be thinking, am I crazy? Am I making up all of these symptoms? Are these all psychological? No, you're not inventing the symptoms. These are classical symptoms of central sensitization. Fortunately, not all patients with chronic pain have central sensitization, but the bad news is that too many do. And many patients that I see were never diagnosed with central sensitization when it started 5, 10, 20 years ago. So I hope that if you're watching this video and your symptoms of central sensitization are just starting, you will be able to revert this condition before it spreads to your whole body. The treatment is quite easy, but requires your participation and perseverance. The improvements will not be noticed right away. I usually tell people that they need at least two years of treatment to see the reversal of central sensitization. I know a lot of doctors who don't know how to diagnose central sensitization and they tell patients that the symptoms are that they are imagining this pain, that there is nothing wrong they can do, and that they don't know how to offer the treatments that are very effective to revert central sensitization. Unfortunately, these doctors did not get this type of education in their medical training. We need to do a better job at training the next generation of medical students. Well, but uh, this is a topic for another video. Let's come back to your pain. What is happening in your body to cause all of these symptoms? Before I continue, let me remind you that this video is not intended to replace medical advice. It is for educational purposes only. You should contact your doctor for a proper diagnosis for you. And if there is an emergency, please go to the nearest emergency or call an ambulance. Our neurological system contains amazing structures that are always changing and learning. 
Your brain today is different from your brain yesterday. Today, you have some synapses that you didn't have yesterday. For example, you heard a song today, then new synapses were created. You read a social media post today, then you made new synapses. You visited a place that you've never been before, well, new synapses were made. This is what we call neuroplasticity. A synapse is a connection between two neurons. The more we use this connection, the stronger it gets. For example, remember when you were learning to drive on the first day that you needed to pay full attention to the steering wheel, the brake, the traffic lights, the other cars, the pedestrians, etc. At the end of the practice lesson, your brain had made thousands of new synapses, but if you didn't use these synapses ever again, they would become weak and probably had dissolved. But you kept driving, you kept using these synapses, then they became stronger and stronger. They became so effective that now they produce a lot of neurotransmitters and now you are able to get the car keys, drive the whole town, back and forth, have a nice chat with the passenger on your side and you didn't even pay attention to the brake pedal, the gas pedal. You may not even remember all the details of the traffic in the city because you were driving the car almost as an autopilot, right? Yes, your brain created those synapses and now the brain runs on autopilot. Our brain can learn millions of new information, new skills, and become expert at that. Just look at some people who play instruments or play sports. Practice makes perfect. Those synapses become very strong and efficient. Well, that's basically what happens in central sensitization. The brain changes in response to pain. We call this nociplastic pain. The brain is trying to eliminate pain, but instead it becomes expert in feeling pain. There are hundreds of new synapses that are created and they are very effective in transmitting pain. Remember, practice makes perfect and now the brain feels pain so easily, almost like an autopilot. Well, this neuroplasticity occurs not only in the brain. The brain is only one organ of the pain system. There are other organs like the spinal cord, the peripheral nerves, the sensors in our skin, also the immunological system and the endocrinological system. These are all affected and changed in central sensitization. The pain system is this alarm system of our body, so in normal circumstances we need to feel pain to alert us that something is abnormal and needs to be fixed. In central sensation, it's like the alarm system is malfunctioning. The volume of the siren is too loud, there are some short circuits, and the alarm system is not doing what it's supposed to do, to bring, for example, the fire truck, the ambulance, or the police to the house. In normal situations, without central sensation, the pain system would alert that something is wrong, and then activate our top-down pain suppressing capacity, and that would take care of the pain. However, in central sensitization, the whole system is imbalanced, is malfunctioning. This means that there are a lot of bottom-up information arriving in the brain and not enough top-down suppression of pain. The functions that are affected by central sensitization are all the areas that are linked to the pain system, to the pain matrix. So what are they? Obviously, the sensation of pain itself. Both peripheral and central sensory systems are sensitized. We feel pain mainly in the skin, but we also feel in the bones, muscles, tendons, internal organs, veins, arteries, and the membranes around the nerves. A person without central sensation feels a toothpick like a small, sharp pain. But the person with central sensation feels a toothpick like a knife piercing the skin. 
In severe cases of central sensitization, even their clothes bother them, even a hug hurts. The brain with central sensitization will use up all neurotransmitters that are normally used to reduce pain in the top-down suppression response. We have powerful neurotransmitters like serotonin and GABA that are used to abolish pain. Our brain also produces our own opioids in response to pain, the endorphins, dynorphins, and encephalines. But when the nerve system is sensitized, these responses are not working, they are abnormal, they are malfunctioning. Well, the other function that is sensitized is the ability to respond to stressful situations. In a person without central sensitization, the body releases adrenaline or adrenaline and cortisol when there is a stress. And these hormones are very strong analgesics under normal circumstances. Well, you may have heard of people who were in a life-threatening situation and they did not feel any pain when they, were suff when they suffered an injury. That's how powerful these stress hormones are. However, when there is central sensation, a stressful situation will increase pain, not decrease pain. And this is because there is a malfunctioning of the stress response because of the central sensation. And last, another function that is affected by central sensation is the response to exercise. In a person without central sensitization, exercises release endorphins and the person will have a sense of well-being, happiness and no pain. But in a person with central sensitization, the opposite happens. Exercise leads to more pain and no noticeable pleasure. Which types of chronic pain lead to central sensitization? We know that central sensitization starts with acute pain. Then. In some people, the pain system will sensitize and initiate this cascade of symptoms. There are some situations that predispose a person to have central sensitization. That is the topic of another video that I made. We know that any type of pain can lead to central sensitization, but the most common are tension headaches, migraine, whiplash, myofascial pain, temporomandibular joint disorder, pelvic pain, low back pain, neuropathic pain, shoulder pain, and arthritis. You may be asking, how about fibromyalgia and complex regional pain syndrome, CRPS? These are two conditions that have a lot in common with central sensitization. Fibromyalgia is central sensitization with pain in multiple areas of the body, almost the whole body. CRPS is central sensitization with pain in one or just a few regions of the body. Well, is there any test that can be ordered to diagnose central sensitization? At this point in time, there are functional MRIs of the brain that can detect specific changes in the pain circuits and suggest central sensitization, but these are not routinely used in clinical practice. They are available mostly for research. There are also some tests that look at how a person responds to painful stimulus. They test how effective are the top-down pain suppressing paths. There is a test called Condition Pain Modulation or CPM, but again, it's only used for research studies. In practice, we confirm if the person has central sensitization but ask, by asking the person to complete some questionnaires about the symptoms of pain, sensitivities, depression, anxiety, and sleep. We also perform a physical examination and we can detect some areas of the skin that is hypersensitive. For example, we use a cotton ball to touch the skin and the person feels pain when we do this. Or we use a sharp pin and the person feels like a knife. Yes, I know, it sounds like torture session but I tell my patients that I need to examine their sensors to see if there is sensitization or not. Now, the better part of this story is that central sensitization is reversible. The brain is an amazing structure. The brain is not static, it's dynamic. 
it's always changing itself, creating new synapses, learning something new, always open to new concepts. It is truly amazing. So if we train the brain to desensitize, it will. It may take time, patience and perseverance, but it is worthwhile. I've seen many patients who had severe central sensation and now they're living a fulfilling and happy life. In some cases, we may need to use medications to increase serotonin or GABA in the brain. We use medications like uh, SNRIs, antidepressants or gabapentinoids. If the person is using opioids, we suggest the person to taper and stop because opioids aggravate opioid-induced hyperalgesia, which is one type of central sensitization. We suggest the person with central sensitization to increase the diet intake of magnesium or take supplement, supplements of magnesium. I have another video that I talk about magnesium. I'll put the links to these videos in the description below. And it's also important to improve sleep efficiency. Watch my other video to learn some tips on how to improve the quality of your sleep. But most of the time, what works best is brain retraining. And how do we do that? Basically using two techniques that you may be very familiar. Mind-body therapies and movement. When used together, mind-body therapies and movement have amazing results especially if they are used in the early stages of central sensitization. Even in people who have central sensitization for many years, I've seen them completely revert if these two therapies are used. Well, but nobody can do these therapies for you. You need to do yourself. What kinds of mind-body therapies? I have another video that I just talk about that. I talk about evidence-based mind-body therapies in this video. But they are cognitive behavior therapy or CBT, biofeedback, mindfulness, meditation, mindfulness-based stress reduction, yoga, hypnosis, guided imagery, acceptance and commitment therapy or ACT. Basically, any type of mind-body therapy will work. You have to choose one that you like, because if you don't like, you're not going to adhere to it. So you may try one of these mind-body therapies for a few sessions, maybe 10 sessions. And if you don't like it, then try a different one and keep trying until you find one that works for you. Then what kind of exercises? Again, any type of exercise will do. What is important is that you move your body, even when it hurts. You need to find an exercise that you enjoy, something that will not be hard for you. Try different types of exercises until you find one that you really like. You need to remember that although you are moving the muscles, you are basically reprogramming the synapses in the brain, retraining the brain to disconnect those synapses of central sensitization. Now remember, you need to practice this mind-body therapies and movement every day, many times a week. The more you practice, the better you become them. And before you realize, you will be doing them almost like an autopilot without even thinking of them they will become so natural and part of your daily life that it will not even seem like therapy anymore. And then when you are at that stage, you will realize that pain is not constant anymore. And all of those symptoms and sensitivities are very diminished or completely gone. So if you like this video, press the thumbs up here. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on the notifications button. Watch my next video here. Goodbye.